These are my top seven advanced tips to unlock the power of Microsoft lists and transform your workflow. And today we will cover everything from automations to sharing your lists and more. So let's nerd out. A quick note before we get started, I will be doing this tutorial within the Microsoft List app for the full screen experience. But if your list is within Microsoft Teams, then you will have a similar toolbar at the top. At Amy's Animal Shop, we have a list here where we track our pet grooming reservations. And I have done another video on 10 tips to use Microsoft List for beginners. And we learned to create this exact list and I will include a link to that video in the description for you to check out later. Let's start off with automations and create a rule. So we will go up to automate and we will go rules and then create a rule. So here we can create a rule that will notify a specific person based on a defined trigger. So let's go with when an item is modified. And then here we are going to go when the groom date changes. And then here we will apply the condition, which we will do anything. Send an email to. And then here we will select the groomer. And then now we have created our first rule. So if we exit out of here, we can test it out. We'll open up Sam's reservation. We will change the reservation date to January 9th. And then now let's take a look at that rule. And then here is that email that has pulled through. So as soon as that date was changed, then that trigger happened. And then the person that was defined within the groomer column is notified. And we can go to item and it will now open up that list item details so that we can see exactly what has happened within this reservation. To edit your rule, then we can go back into automate rules and then manage rules. And here we could turn off that rule or we can leave it back on. And then if we select it, we can update any of the parameters or even delete the rule. You can even create up to 15 rules to ensure that everyone is being automatically notified based on certain items. Next, we are going to learn how to create a reminder. So we'll go up to automate once again. For some reason, you just need to wait a second and then the reminder drops down. And then here, this is only available for date column types within your list. And in our example, we have the grooming date, which is the only date column. So we can set a reminder based on a date that's already been defined within your list items. So we'll create a reminder for this groom date. And then here a pane is going to open up on the right hand side. And what we are doing is we are actually creating a power automate flow and in order to create that flow, we need to ensure that our permissions are granted to these various applications. And I've already signed in, but if you're seeing a little notice to sign in here, then you're just going to have to click through on those, wait for them to go green, and then we can go on and continue creating our reminder. So we'll go continue. And here it says flow name. So we are creating a flow within Power Automate. And this integration is built into Microsoft Lists, and it is such a user friendly experience compared to using Power Automate directly on its own. Now, one thing that I strongly recommend doing here is giving your flow a descriptive name so that it stands out when you do need to go back and make any changes to it. So in our example, I'm going to call this one groom date reminder, and then I want to be notified two days in advance of the grooming date. So let's create. So here we can see that our workflow has been added. And now let's take a look at that email reminder as well as pop into Power Automate so that you can learn how you can manage your reminders. So here we have that email reminder notification and we can see that it is from Power Automate. So we'll take a look at that in just a moment. And the subject is reminder for your list name, and then the number of days before your date column. And then within the email, we can actually click on the list item and that will redirect you to the list so that you can pull up all of those pertinent details. Let's now pop in to Power Automate. Here we are in Power Automate and to see your reminders, you need to go to my flows. And at the top, we can see that groom date reminder. 
Now, Power Automate is a bit of an unfamiliar area if you haven't used it before, so I'm just going to show you some basics. If you have forgotten to rename this, then all of your reminders will just say send a reminder, so you won't actually be able to identify which one is which. But if we go edit, then you'll be able to rename your reminder from the edit window. So you can just select the name up here, edit it as you need, and then you would save. But I'm just going to back out of here. And then we'll just go back to my flows. And then just a couple of other things that you might need to use here are the turn off. So if you wanted to pause this for a bit, then you could turn it off. And then subsequently, you can turn it back on. Or if you don't need that reminder anymore, then we can select the ellipses and then go delete. And then that will delete your reminder. Before we move on, I just wanted to touch on rules versus reminders. So if we go up back into this rules and go create a rule, then rules are actually a blanket rule where you can email a varied person as defined by whichever item you set here. So for example, we used groomer. So if we exit out of here, then that is going to send a notification to the person identified in this groomer column. So that could have been Mike, but it was me in the example that we walked through. So rules will email a specified type of person based on a condition, whereas reminders are by default just going to remind you. If you wanted to remind other people, then that would be a more advanced tutorial. But just keep that in mind that if people do want to be reminded of certain dates within their list items, then they will need to go in and create their own reminders. Let's now move on to a basic example of using approvals. So once again, we will go up to automate and then we will go configure approvals. So this is just where we turn the approvals on. And the first time that you do this, it might take a little bit of time for it to actually be set up. We'll toggle that on. And now we can see that an approval status column will be added. And then we can select the approval and we will just walk through a basic example of submitting that request as well as seeing the team's notification. And then also just to note that we can disable the approvals at any time, but if there are any that are in progress, then those will still be available in Microsoft Teams. So with that being enabled, let's apply and we will see this come through. So right away, we can see that this approval status column has been added, but there might be a couple of other columns that you might wanna add as well pertaining to approvals. So if we select the dropdown and go column settings and go show hide columns, then we can see that the approval status has been checked. So that's this one here, but we can also go approvers, responses, as well as approval creator. So let's apply this. And now we will pop into Mike's list and he can submit an approval. Here we are in Mike's list and to submit an approval, he can simply select the not submitted icon under the approval status. And then here we just have a very basic approval form. So the name defaults to the title column of the list item. He will define an approver. So we'll just add myself. And then for the details, this is just going to be a brief description. And in our example, Charles is a large pet. So Mike is just requesting approval to have a helper with the grooming. So now we will submit and take a look at the next steps. Here we are in my list and in my activity feed, I've received a notification immediately that Mike has sent a request for an approval. And here we have some details about this approval as well. And if I clicked on this list item, then it would take me to the list. And then here we have just some status updates for this approval. So I'm going to approve this request, but you also have an option to reassign it. So say the person sent the approval to the incorrect person, then you could reassign the approval to a different colleague. You could also reject it but let's go and approve and see Mike's notifications. Back in Mike's Teams, we can see as well that he has an activity feed notification about this approval. 
So here's the approvals card and we can see all of the details about the approval as well as the status. And there is even an option to save this approval as a PDF if you didn't want to keep it for your records. So let's select Charles and we will see that that approval status has automatically been updated within the list item. And back in the full list view, we can see that those other columns have also automatically updated. So we can see that the approver was me, the response of the approval was done by myself, and then we also have Mike being who submitted the approval request. So all of this has automatically updated as part of the flow, and we can see how adding approvals can help us automate processes and automatically update our lists. And before we move on from approvals within Microsoft Teams, there is also an approval app. So if we select the ellipses, then we can search for the app. So it's this one right here called approvals. But from the approvals app, this provides a nice snapshot of all of your approvals. So it's a great way to stay organized and also keep track of all of the various approvals that you have been a part of. Next, we're going to move on to sharing, exporting, and importing our lists. So starting off with sharing, we can go up to this share icon, and here is a basic sharing screen. But if we select this gear icon, then we have some additional options. Now, sharing lists can be quite an advanced topic, especially when we get down to sharing individual permissions. So I just wanted to quickly touch base on this sharing of your entire list options here, but I would recommend checking with your admin if you did want to get into sharing of individual lists. Or if you want me to do a tutorial on how to share lists and list permissions, then drop that in the comments below and we will see if we get enough votes. Next, we are going to move on to exporting our list. So from this export icon, we have some different options here. The most common one would be in Excel. And then even further would be to Power BI, which is a whole other app, but is a very powerful tool if your organization does use it. Exporting your list into an Excel file is a great option, especially if you want to share your list information without granting permissions to that list, then exporting into an Excel file is a great way to do that. Another great thing about using Excel is that you can even analyze your data. So say you have some statistical information in there, and you want to visualize it in a chart format or even within a pivot table, then exporting it into Excel will give you all of that functionality to analyze your list data. Leading us to importing your list, if you have an Excel or a CSV file, then we can use those as a basis to create a list. We just go upload file and then select the Excel file and then we will open. So here I've just taken that export Excel file that we already have just for demonstration purposes. So we can see at the top that when you import an Excel file into a list and we have some different options here and these are the different column types that you can define for the columns that are in your file. Now the number of column types here are limiting so it's not a totally seamless import but this is a really great tool that I have used in my previous roles where we would export our clients from our database into an excel file and then I would create a custom checklist and then we would import it into Microsoft list and our team would use that as a seasonal checklist for each of our properties when I was working in property management that's just a great example of how we can use the import feature within Microsoft lists. Moving along to activity and version history, if we open up a list item, then under this comments dropdown, we can go all activity. And this provides us with a nice snapshot of what has happened on this list item. And you'll notice that this item was edited today, but it's not providing us with information about what has been edited. So to view that, we need to go to the version history. So we will close out of here and then we will go to the ellipses again and we will go version history. So here we can see that there are two items that have been changed to date and this one was the groom date and that's the new date and this one is the groomer and it's been changed to Mike and we can see that both of these were modified by me. And if you 
select this little carrot drop down, then we can either view the changes or we can restore that version of the list item. So if we go view, then this will just provide you with some additional options as well as additional information on this change. I'm going to close out of here. Now, one feature that we have not covered today is the new forms experience. And I have done an updated tutorial on this video that includes new features that have been released on how we can use forms to effortlessly collect our data in our list. And I have linked that video right here, or you can check out this suggested video by YouTube 